Welcome to Tutorial Video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to cover an example in SugarCube 2.36 of expressing exposition through text styling. We saw in a previous video how we can apply text styling by using two different symbols on either side of a word or other phrasing we want to change the visual appearance of within SugarCube. We've previously seen how we can use two single quotation marks, two slashes, and two underscores by to apply text styling to some particular text. And this makes it stand out visually from the other text around it. As we think about text styling, we need to also consider the role of game writers and other people as we construct stories, and especially as we construct interactive stories when we need to convey information within text form. Often we use the term exposition to describe the communication of information to a reader who may not know the information needed to understand a scene, a character motivation, or to make better sense of an interaction they might encounter. The characters within the scene might understand something, but to help the reader or player within a game to understand something, we expose them to information, we give them exposition. Within text, and especially within interactive stories arising out of Twine, the text itself is the primary form of communication. Therefore, if we want to give extra information to the player or reader, we need to do so through text styling. One of the ways we can do that by understanding a kind of convention that has arisen within screenplays and is carried over into video games and a number of other works that help players and readers better understand what's going on through particular uses of text styling that we've covered in a previous video. So let's look at the first example of this. I have a passage called Scene 1, and I have various uses of text styling I've previously discussed. I have use of stronger emphasis and emphasis multiple times within the single passage. Right here at the start of this Scene 1, I have a description of the scene, and it is in stronger emphasis, or what we might call bold. And that is presented again through two single quotation marks on either side of the text. Right underneath that is a use of emphasis. Now, seen in this form right here, we don't necessarily notice these changes, but let's go ahead and play this. Notice immediately that we are given extra information, exposition, through the text styling itself. Notice that the bold stands out from the other uses of the text, and especially the emphasis right here. This emphasis on the second line exposes what's going on, the action within the scene. And in fact, many video games carry on this same text styling in their presentation of works, even within written works when just examining the screenplay itself. In these particular cases, we see actions are in italics, or what we might call emphasis. This emphasis right here tells us what the actions are, people entering and exiting scenes and plays. In interactive stories and in video games, we might think of this as the actions other characters are doing if we're looking at longer sections of dialogue. We might also think of this as thoughts to oneself a character might be having, depending on the point of view that we're reading as a reader or a player. In this particular case, we have the actions again in italics, or what we might call emphasis. In the cases of the stronger emphasis, or the use of bold, notice it's giving us this extra information. And I'm also doing it right here for the name, so the name stands out from the text they are speaking. So we have the establishment of where we are, what actions are going on, using this extra information just through text styling, and of course, who is speaking. There's one other convention I want to highlight in this particular passage that is common within many interactive stories and video games that follow in the same standard. And that is this use of continue. Notice the use of the word continue within parentheses. This is showing to a reader or player who may have come across this convention and other works that there is more text to see that they are not currently seeing. So this is giving extra information, exposition about what is coming up. There is more to continue, but we're not currently seeing it yet. So we're seeing bold establishing where we are or who is speaking important information and the use of, again, emphasis or italics specifying actions. So let's come back over here and move on to this next line. Notice in this next line, I've got two single quotations around the person who is speaking. Now, this is the use of another convention, again, using text styling to express extra information, extra exposition. So I'm going to go ahead and play this now that we've seen this line, and let's work through the whole thing. 
So I am using stronger emphasis or bold to establish what's going on and who is speaking. I'm using emphasis or what might be called italics to identify actions that is going on within a scene that the reader or player may need to be made aware of so they understand what's going on. And then I'm also using right here continue in parentheses to get information to a reader or player that they might not have. There is more to see. We need to continue the text. And then we're moving over here. Now this last convention that I want to mention between one passage and another is that I have each speaker here in their own passage. Now potentially in a play as large as Hamlet, this would create many, many, many passages, and I might want to reconsider how I've structured things in a much longer work. But at least for these two passages, the use of one speaker continue in the next speaker creates the convention that each speaker gets their own chunk on the screen, or how we might think of from Twine, their own individual passage. So let me go, on, go over again what I've talked about in this video. We can use text styling as part of exposition within Twine. That is, we can give extra information as part of the text itself by using what we already know about text styling. We can create emphasis, stronger emphasis, or underline or a number of other things SugarCube supports to communicate extra information to a reader or player interacting with our work. If we want to follow conventions that we might see in a play, or written in a screenplay, or even performed for a screen, or something that might show up in the dialogue of a video game, we can work with conventions that are already available to us. That is, we can use things like a stronger emphasis of bold to highlight important terms, names, where something is, help a reader or player establish where they are within a particular scene. We can also use emphasis, or what we might call italics, to give extra information about actions, especially entrances or exits within a play or screenplay. And we can also use, again, stronger emphasis to highlight the name of a speaker. There are two other conventions I mentioned. One is the use of the word continue in parentheses to show to a reader or player there is more information not currently shown on the screen. And the second is moving in between boxes, in this case passages within Twine, where each speaker gets its own box or its own emphasis on the screen, showing that the reader or player can navigate between them at their own pace. So all of these are important ways to communicate extra information, exposition as we might say when thinking about a story and its construction, through just text and its styling. Thanks for watching.